Well, sir, it's about 10 o'clock in the evening as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. And here in the living room, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook. Mr. Victor Gook sits in his easy chair under the floor lamp reading the kitchenware dealer's quarterly, while Mrs. Victor Gook occupies a corner of the Davenport and darns socks. But now she looks up and speaks. Listen. What's your watch say? Huh? Look and see what time it is. Clock on him, Link? I guess so. Something's eating it. Acts like it goes a while and then stops a while. Says 9.20 now. It's, uh, seven minutes past ten. Think I'll trot up to bed pretty soon. I believe I will myself. That, uh, screwdriver is still out in the pantry. What you want with it? Thought I'd locate the trouble in the clock. No, sir. Don't you touch that clock. Well, it's broke, ain't it? Yeah, but I don't want it any broker. That clock costs lots of money. Well, I can unscrew the back panel and see if the spring is operating as it should. Uh-uh. And then I can... Remember the last time you fooled with a clock? No. When my kitchen alarm went on the warpath and you took it all apart to fix it? Seems I'm to me. I'm still I... finding bolts and washers around. Found a spring do jigger underneath the dining room carpet the other day. The clock isn't much good unless it keeps time, you know. Well, I'll have Rush take it downtown Saturday or sometime. I guess this is him now. You, sir? Yeah. Yes, sir, me for bed. I've had a good big day of it. Cleaning in the morning and shopping in the afternoons, enough to wear out Bill Dempsey. Where have you been since the show let out? Me and Rush went in the Greek's near nickel soda. The Greek let you kids sit around his confectionery by the hour when you only spend five cents? He don't like it very much, but what can he do? We're human beings. We got rights. Hello, guys. Hello. Oh. She'd think he'd get mad having people take up space. <laughs> get mad or go mad. <laughs> get mad. He does get mad. He knows me and Ruth Joni got a dime between us. He knows we'll order nickel sodas and sit in the front booth and look out the window. But his hands are tied. He can't do anything about it. It's his job to serve the public. You and Rooster are some public. Sure. And Rooster rubs it in. On the strength of his nickel soda, he'll make that poor Greek bring him about nine glasses of water. <laughs> Sometime that Greek's going to put arsenic in Rooster's water. Might be a good thing. How is the show? Oh, so-so. Gloria Golden doing the same old stuff. I don't know about high school boys trotting off to moving pictures of a Monday night. Why? Well, ought to stay home and study. I got all my assignments for tomorrow. Well, just the same, though. Movies cost money, and here it is, the fir- very first day of the week. An innocent passerby would think we were millionaires. <laughs> you got that expression from me, Ma. What expression? Innocent passerby. Well, makes no difference where I got the expression. It's crazy to blow in your nice money all the time. We couldn't when we were kids. Could we, Vic? Uh-uh. Every third Christmas, my dad would hand me two dimes and a nickel, and he'd say, Son, here's your spending money. You had to make 25 cents last year for three years, huh? That's right. And I had a darn good time on it. I bet you wouldn't crawl in a barrel of Bibles and swear that's a true story. Get me a barrel of Bibles. Oh, see, got a very exciting chunk of news for you people. What's that? Smelly Clark's got a girl. Has he? He escorted her to the bike show tonight. Well... I told you Smelly Clark would get himself a girl pretty soon. He's been looking around for a long time now. Finally made the grade. Who is she? Goes under the name of Lily Spiegel. Smelly introduce you to her? Sure. Did he say, here's my girl, Lily Spiegel? He said practically that. Care to hear the entire story? All right. You interested, Doc? Vitally. But forgive me if I drop off to sleep. You won't drop off to sleep. This news is full of fascinating facts. Okay. Well, Rooster and myself arrived at the Bijou early, see? We like to do that so we can stand out in front and watch the innocent pasture bicycle go past. Greet our various acquaintance, get the angle. Also, Rooster enjoys buying his ticket and sticking it in his hat so the innocent pasture buys know he's attending the theater. Yes, sir. There are certain individuals that stand around in front of the bicycle that got no ticket. I see. Well, anyway, we were watching the innocent pasture bicycle go past, and by gosh, come along, Smelly Clark and this girl. Rooster saw him first and nudged me. He says, I bet Smelly's got himself a girl. I says, I bet he has, too. So we waited till they got up close. Was she a pretty girl? So-so. Blonde or brunette? They should call her a blonde. Got hair like Frida Kahl. Uh-huh. Well, when Smelly and his girl got up close, me and Rooster called out, Hello there, Smelly. Oh, you should have called him by his real name. Yeah, we thought of that later. Well, anyway, Smelly answered hello and escorted the girl right up to where we were standing. He says, Lily, I'd love to present Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook, this is Miss Beagle. Uh-huh, he did it the right way. Gentleman is always presented to the lady before the lady is presented to the gentleman. Yeah. And then he says, uh, Lily, wants you to form the acquaintance of Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis, Miss Beagle. 
Well, I says, happy to meet you, Miss Beagle, and Rooster got funny and says, press the flesh. That wasn't smart. He said it out of embarrassment. Rooster ain't at home with girls. You better learn some manners. Rooster's okay. Anyway, he likes comical expressions. When he meets a person, he always says, put her there, give me five, or shake the hand that shook the hand of John L. Sullivan or something. You know. Mm-hmm. After the introductions were over, Smiley says, uh, Miss Beagle is my lady friend, fellas. We says, that so? He says, yeah. Uh, come on, Lily, and I will purchase the tickets. My. So he marched up to the ticket window, and he says, hey, get this guy. I am listening. He says to the woman, two tickets for the show, please. <laughs> 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 two tickets for the show, please. What do you think she thought he wanted two tickets for, the circus? <laughs> <laughs> of course, me and Rooster were following along right behind. We took in the whole works. Probably got the poor kid all fussed. He wasn't fussed. You'd have thought he was the president of the United States, the swell way he handled everything. Well, the woman shoved two tickets out through the little window, and Smelly shoved a dollar bill at her. And here's what you won't believe. Uh, what don't you believe? Smelly says to the ticket lady, keep the change. Ah, uh, as I sit here and breathe a breath of life, that's the truth. Keep the change, he says. Oh, my. I never heard of buying tickets for the movie show and telling the ticket lady to keep the change. Neither did I. It was all for his girl's benefit, see? Uh-huh. Rooster liked to faint it when Smelly t- told the ticket lady she could keep the chain. Oh, I bet. What's happened next? Well, Smelly turned to his girl and says, uh, take my arm, dear. He call her dear? Sure. She take his arm? You bet. And when they got to the door where the fellow in the uniform is, Smelly says, here are the tickets for the show. <laughs> hey, can you beat that? No. Here are the tickets for the show. Uh, and then they go inside. Uh-huh. With you and Rooster right at their heels, I suppose. Sure. We don't want to miss anything. I bet they selected seats in the front row. No, they didn't. I was somewhat surprised. They sat down in the center aisle about the middle. Where'd you and Rooster sit? Right behind them. Uh, you would. Why not? We're American citizens. I bet you made remarks out loud while the picture was going on. Not at all. They wouldn't have heard us if we did. Because Smelly was making so many remarks out loud. What kind of remarks? Let me tell you what happened before the picture started. All right. Smelly helped his girl off with her coat, see? And then while he was standing up... He looked the audience all over to see if he could spot any friends of his. He spotted four or five and gave them all big, deep bows. <laughs> big, deep bows, huh? Almost touched his toes. Rooster and me suspected him of bowing to a good many strangers in order to give his girl the impression he was very popular around town. <laughs> he stood there and gave a lot of airy waves at the balcony. But by gosh, there wasn't anybody in the balcony. Well, where's the remarks you made out loud? We like to you about the chewing gum. Chewing gum? Smelly whipped out a package of chewing gum, see? He undid the wrapper and offered a stick to his girl. She took some and he took some. Only two sticks gone, see? Yeah. He was still standing up by his seat. Everybody was watching. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, after him and his girl both had a stick of chewing gum out of this full package, he took the rest of the package and threw it away. Ah. He did. Right out in the aisle. Just tossed it away. Three sticks still left in it. What is the idea? He was showing his girl he didn't give a darn. Money's no item. Set him up in the other alley. You know. Mm. (laughs) Hmm. Throwing away a package of chewing gum with only two sticks gone. Yeah. And you ought to see me and Rooster scramble for it. Well, he'll probably want his chewing gum back next time you see him. Well, he won't get it. <laughs> he give us a big fatherly smile and turn to his girl and says, Children love sweet things, don't they, dear? Mm-hmm. What were the remarks he made while the picture was going on? He was explaining the movie to his girl. Told her all about how it was going to come out and so on. You could hear him ten feet away. <laughs> I think the fellow with the mustache is the villain, dear. Up that camera on his after them jewels, dear. That's a bomb he's got, dear. He's going to blow up the place, dear. My. All through the show, he kept that up. I figured somebody'd ask the usher to throw him and his girl out in their ear, but he got away with it in good shape. Mm-hmm. Take it all around. I never saw a guy have so much fun as Smelly had this evening. Does that conclude your story? Yeah. Guess I'll stroll up to bed, then. You know what? You know what? I think I'll look around for a lady friend. concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And there we leave Chris Goes Vic and Sade until the next time.